All right, everyone. Did you guys hear me all right? All right, cool. All right, so uh, let's, let's get into this, guys. Let's do this uh, weekly trade review. I'll be going over my trades. And then if you guys have any trades or any stocks you want me to go over, uh, I'll go over that as well. Uh, pretty much the same way we did it last week. So let me pull over, uh, you know, some charts from this week. So let's go back over uh, Monday. So over on Monday. All right, so Monday, uh, you know, first trade of the week started off on over on WORX Works. And this this really this really kicked off uh, you know the party. This really kicked off everything. Um, you know, works was our first really big squeezer uh, we had of April. I could be wrong, but I believe works was that really big squeezer we had. Um, I know we had a lot, but you know, works just really just went crazy intraday. Went from uh, you know four dollars to what works it. Let's 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 just go back and look at the chart here. And I know we had a lot of squeezes, but you know, works was you know really a really big one we here we had. Let me just go back. Go to a bigger time frame here. All right. All right. So, yeah, here's the chart on works. Um, you know, this is a five million float stock. They had a great catalyst on works. Uh, we had cheap borrows on this one. And uh, let me just pull over the chart, show you guys where I got in. So, again, right around this, uh, this 10 20 mark. So, this one, you know, was waiting for more confirmation over on works. Um, if you guys remember, the price action was pretty weak on it. Uh, on works and you know this is where uh kind of the same mistake uh you know today i i changed up a little bit works was another one though i felt like I, I underperformed a little bit on this you know now really going off you know my risk reward and uh really factoring that, that in more than ever now obviously i've always factored risk management and risk reward but more than ever now and uh i did minimize this one i did minimize this one uh on works I think I ended up only getting a what was what day was this? This was Monday. Okay. So yeah, I mean I, I did capture a 2.3 R on work. So um did minimize it a little bit, and that's and that's where uh you know I I, I uh you know I should have scaled in a little bit better on it. Should have scaled in a little bit better on it on works. Um you know, I knew it had potential to rip on up. You know, I did wait for that confirmation type entry, but this is one of those where, you know, I, I got to work on scaling a little bit better on it. And that's something I'm going to improve on. But overall, it was still a solid trade. You know, I captured a 2R. You know, I could have done better. I think also um, I was a little impatient on my exit on it. You know, I, I did have a 720 goal on it. And then the rest to sell into the parabolic. So you guys can see, you know, uh, you know, selling a little early, you know, sold at seven, sold all of it at seven twenty. So I think I, I should have, you know, just, uh, you know, been a little more patient on it. Uh, you know, I think, you know, seven seventies, you know, low eight bucks was reasonable. I know it hit like twelve or thirteen, I believe, but you know, that's kind of irrational thinking, you know, to really sell that high unless I don't know, unless you're you're looking to swing it or. I don't know. Some maybe someone may say that's not irrational, but to me, for me, I think it is. I think reasonable would have been, you know, a reasonable high target would have been, you know, upper sevens, maybe low eights, even mid eights. Um, but yeah, I think I minimized it a little bit. Uh, you know, I had a good entry. I think maybe, you know, I could have, you know, scaled in a little bit, you know, a little bit early on it. Um, didn't, you know, did that kind of one bullet, one exit type trade on it, but. You know, yeah, that's pretty much it on works. You know, I um, think I should have uh, been a little more patient on the exit. Um, think I could have scaled it, scaled it a little bit better. But besides that, I think it was uh, wasn't bad. Wasn't bad there on works. Um, now this is Tuesday. Tuesday, uh, my next trade mm -hmm. was over on S N O N. Uh, this is a reactive trade on S N O N. Um, 
you know, was his pre-market, you know, reserved a couple borrows, nothing crazy. I know some of you guys are freaking out when I was shorting this. Uh, I reserved 2,000 borrows on it. So, you know, I did see a seller step in here or a fresh seller, 1050s. So I was joining them. I was joining the refresh seller with a tight risk. I think I was risking like 1070, I want to say it was. I think I was risking 1070. Um, and I had like a mid 1040s average. And goal was, you know, 970s, 950s, and I met it. And I was good. I was good that I was on the covers, and you should be, right? Um, I think I, I think I almost bottom ticket, and then from there, I think it went straight up, and then it ended up coming straight down. Uh, yeah, this is a reactive trade. No sort of setup. Wasn't like a wash trap and squeeze pattern um, on SNON. Just a reactive trade, basing on the price action and kind of what was going on. I feel like SNON got really long crowded um, uh, on this one, and I feel like you know it was gonna you know flush out a little bit. Uh, and yeah, that's it. That's it on SNON. Just reactive trade. Uh, you know. Had a tight stop on it, hard stop, you know, 1070 was going to cut it, you know, wasn't giving it over under. Um, and then goal was 970s on 50s, and I met my target there on SONN. Uh, next trade uh, was over on PSTI. This one was a multi day runner. Uh, I was waiting for that one day where the bid stop come in. We see weakness in pre market, we see it stay heavy into the open. Similar setup to what I had on 8K yard last week, and I was patient and wait for it, right? Um, you know, had this morning flush, you know, stayed heavy into the pop. So I joined it, got in 780 versus eight bucks. And, and then I was covering into the flush, covering into the flush there, you know, 730, 710s. Uh, it's another one where, you know, I got to do a little bit better on, you know, working in the scaling in, um, just didn't want to ruin my average. Um, I should have started to, you know, scale in at 770, started to fail. Yes, it would have brought my average down to you know 770, but you know the R the R's would have been a lot better, and I could have captured you know this could have been a four or five R trade if I added this didn't add. Um, I think I still captured. I think maybe I got to do the, I think it was you know two and a half or three R on it. Um, I got to do the math. I'm not good at math, guys. Um, but yeah, um, that was it. Playbook setup. Um. Yeah, that's it on PSTI. It was a solid trade. Uh, a lot of I've been you know, shorting a lot more. Um, I find that in this market, since we have so many plays, we're having a lot of names people forget about. So we're having those, you know, really nice day two, uh, day three bag holder short setups. You know, once you spot the weakness, the bids are gone. We've been seeing some really good, uh, you know, setups off that pattern. So a lot of my trades have been off that. Um, CNF. This is you know first time I really swung short in the wild. And I do want to start doing this a little bit. And I know you guys may get a little scared, but, uh, you know, on these gap and crap setups, ones that slowly fade throughout the day that become off radar, we see it the next day, I have like a 10, sometimes 50%, 15% gap down. So CNF, this was my best, uh, one of my best R trades. I think, I think I made like, I think I made on this one, like three grand on it. On on uh, CNF three three and a half may have been a little over three grand on it I believe um this was you know one of my better trades of the week uh, I had like a two ten average and I uh, you know swung it overnight and was covering here upper one seventies one eighties on CNF so it's something I, I may look to do may look to you know on some of the gap and crap setups that just you know slowly fade off radar may look to hold them throughout the morning maybe cover into the close or look to possibly swing short it overnight. Uh, that's how I'm going to capture these really big R's on, on some of these shorts. Um, MBRX, uh, this one, where did this end up? I'm actually curious. I, I didn't look at it because this is one where, you know, it was my birthday a few days ago and I uh, just didn't want to sit through it all day and, all right, good thing I covered it because, yeah, I mean, I, I probably would have eh, – actually, maybe I would have gotten out the following day. No, maybe into this flush out of the open. But, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the, the thesis on this one was, you know, a lot of baggage overhead. Um, this went on a 150 million share day. Uh, they had another PR. 
and I like the risk reward versus 140. So I was risking like five cents on it. Uh, got in there, you know, 135 short, risking 140. And I think the goal was like 120, 115. So uh, that was a thesis on it. Just a lot of baggage overhead. And uh, I was thinking we we're going to run into some resistance and come back down to, you know, that 120, 115 area and just kind of chopped around all day. And this wasn't really behaving how I wanted it to. So I just took it off. Um, it, it was coming back to my average. So um, I was like, you know what, Nick, just, you know, having a great day. I think that was one of my better days of the month and just took it off. Just it was, it was just wasn't behaving how I wanted it to. So that was that trade. And I think that was the last trade. And then, uh, and then, uh, EDNT. Oh, who was that? Uh, was that Dennis? No, Dennis took the same trade. <laughs> That's funny. Dennis took the same trade as me. And then, yeah, um, EDNT. I'm not sure if you're listening to this, Dennis. What's up? If you are, um, but yeah, EDNT. Um, I mean, what more can I say? We've talked about it all morning. Uh, it was a low float stock, in float rotation, coronavirus news. Um, I could have been, I, I could have waited a little bit more towards that 450, but like I said, I'm really working on risk management and, you know, scaling into some of these trades much better. It's something I want to work on. I got to do better at, I got to do better at it on the short side and on the long side. And wanted to start in a little early here. I thought this was a, uh, you know, not bad to start in here as four tens are starting to hold uh, and just couldn't follow through. It just couldn't follow through. Um, and I cut it for a very small loss. You guys can see uh, only, you know, mm -hmm. I got to do the math a little bit better, but I, I kind of estimated it around, you know, uh, point, you know, four R. So it wasn't even a full R. Full R is 968 bucks for me. So that's a very small loss, 350 bucks. So, so yeah, I mean, Oops, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, things, uh, reasons why this may have not followed through was because of the lack of borrows. Um, we just saw a lot of these plays start to squeeze recently. So, it may have gotten really long crowded there in EDNT. There wasn't enough shorts to squeeze out. So, that's why it failed. Um, just overall today, you know, into the open, we saw a lot of weakness on these names. So, that could have contributed to. So I knew it wasn't, you know, an eight an eight plus type setup on EDNT to start with. I knew that in the pre-market, but I still, you know, thought it was worth the risk reward on it. Um, so I took the trade. Um, you know, the best setup on it was the pre-market, you know, right around this four dollar mark. A little chasey. I would have liked to see in 350s. I had orders out, didn't get filled on it. But this would have been the the, the better setup there. Four dollar, you know, it's squeezing up, you know, momentum's flowing. Um, you know, orders are going through a lot of volume. Um, that would have been a really nice play there. Four twenties versus four bucks could have captured a really nice play there. Um, you know, that's the thing, you know, I got to be a little bit more consistent with, you know, when I'm, you know, being aggressive on certain names, but was a little bit more aggressive there in the pre-market, um, and scaled in even a little bit. And it would have been a nice winner. Um, whereas I tried it again now and it didn't work out. So, um, I still got some things to work on. I'm not a perfect trader, but uh, I'm improving every day. So yeah, that's it for my trades from the week. Um, some takeaways I would say from this week. Um, you know, I still think you know some of the best setups are these these bag holder shorts, um, ones that ones that have good liquidity. Uh, we did see ones that you know lower float ones um, like NURO and CHCI today. I'm not sure what CHCI did, but some of those are a little tricky because they get the spreads really open up and you know they're still lower and float names. So some of those could be easy to get stopped out on them and lack of liquidity makes it tough to really size in if you guys have a bigger account. Um, but overall, I, I think, you know, these, these, these day two setups, these back holder short setups uh, have been really working well lately. Um, overall, we've been seeing a lot of, you know, you know, good, you know, good moves on the long side. But today was probably the first really noticeable day so far that we've seen major, major fail follow through. Um, EDNT, THMO. And it's just one day, but we'll see how it looks tomorrow. We'll see if tomorrow is kind of the same way. 
maybe we're going through a you know a change in the market where these names are going to start to actually come down to earth. We'll get our days where we have our squeezes. We'll get our days where we have our fades. You know, see if we kind of come back towards normality. Um, oh, I didn't go. Did I go over yesterday? Yesterday's uh, trade because I couldn't trade yesterday because I had my platform issue. But uh, UAVS was a beautiful one yesterday off the wash trap and squeeze pattern. On this 90 cent reclaim, I got to go to one minute chart, but this was a really good trade yesterday. I know some of you guys took this one. Yeah, you have, yes, this was a really nice wash trap and squeeze pattern. Beautiful one because you had a set nice wrist, right? Some of those, some of the setups, you know, you may want to, you know, look to, you know, scale in or the risk reward may not be fantastic, but this one was good, man, because. You know, had that 90 cent was that key K mark, and you could have a nice, you know, five cent stop on it. You could load the boat there on, on that setup, risking, you know, five cents. And, uh, you know, or you want to give it maybe, you know, to 80 cents, even a 10 cent risk, right? You know, with a goal to, you know, 120s, 130s, 140s. And that's not even unrealistic, you know, 120s, 130s, 140s. I mean, this was a really great trade yesterday on UAVS. You know, volume was here. 8 million in float stock, in float rotation, uh, had a good catalyst. That was a nice one. And then we had Pixie yesterday. And I wish I could have traded yesterday. That, that really, that was, that was really annoying. Well, it is what it is. And then we had Pixie yesterday. This was a nice one too, right? You know, held, you know, held once, held twice, higher low. I think uh, Chill Out took this one. And, you know, went all the way up to 1150 there. So, you know, 850 was that line. You know, held on a pullback here. You can look to, you know, get in on a higher low or look to get in as we held 850. With a set stop below that mark. We want to give it a little bit more room, maybe to, you know, 825, 8 bucks. I don't know, whatever you guys' risk may have been. But still, the risk reward is there for, you know, a nice, you know, three possible four hour trade on it on Pixie. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the week. Uh, so if you guys have anything else to say, um, you guys have any questions, you want me to go over any of your guys' trades, um, I'll be happy to do so. Yeah, I do remember that, Sterling. I think someone said I had Superman balls for shorting SNNL. <laughs> nah, I, I'm careful, guys. I mean, if I'm taking, you know, I, I, on that SONN trade, um, I had a cushion on the day, right? I was up like three grand. So I was able to be a little bit more flexible. So when I'm up, you know, a decent amount of the day, um, not always, but I may, I may look to take a little bit more reactive trades. Um but still, you know, the risk reward was there. You know, I saw our seller step in. I saw he was refreshing his size on the ask, and uh, it was staying heavy. So I was thinking, you know, it was going to at least flush out to 950, and it did. So it uh, worked out well for me on that trade. All right, so do you guys have any questions? Uh, anything you want me to go over? That was a great time. Or do you guys have any trades you want me to, you know, run through saying, hey, Nick, you know, what happened here? Or, you know, what do you think about this trade? Or what do you think about this ticker? Anything, guys, anything. Um And I'll be coming out with those two videos probably this weekend. I'll record them probably tomorrow. I'll, re I'll look to record the uh, the video on uh, risk management, uh, how I you know how 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 I think uh, you guys can grow your accounts, you know, you know using uh, risk management properly, and then uh, the video on the scaling. Yeah, I'm looking forward to making them. Looking forward to making them.
All right, you guys don't have any questions? Not even one? I'm sure you guys could think of something, right? It's nothing's on your mind right now? Or are you guys just, you know, looking for trade still? I know we did this a little bit early today. MOSY curling up a little bit. EDNT straight cell fest. And THMO. Yeah, PDSB some follow through here. Looks like one of those newsletters pumps that actually held its gains. Uh, what do I think of MOSY? You know, I haven't really watched the tape too much on it, but, you know, it feels a little bit similar to yesterday um, on kind of like CHEI, just, you know, the just the float structure, um, kind of the way it looks, you know, reminds me a little bit of CHCI on, on MOSY. Uh, it did pop off at a weird time. Um, I'm thinking a lot of I, – I, I don't know. Did I get a newsletter uh, text on this thing? Okay, yeah, so newsletters did hit MOSY, so I'm sure we're going to have some baggage over here um, on MOSY. You know, around this four dollar region. So, you know, if we could ever maybe get get over three forty, three fifty, start the base, start the grind and hold, maybe we can see some follow through on it. But just kind of the way these names have been going today, uh, it really makes it tough uh, to get involved with anything on the long side. Uh, you have to assume it's going to stuff here on MLSY. This wouldn't be one where I would look to even get an early on it. To be honest, it's just not, it's just not really uh, worth it. Just probably a higher chance. It's Probably a higher chance than it's gonna go. Then it's, then it's it's that. lost my uh, lost my wording there. Higher chance it's gonna fail than it's gonna go. In my opinion, that's what I meant to say. Like for for whereas EDNT, I did think that you know, you know it had a, had a better chance of maybe going here. Uh, maybe at least thinking it was gonna maybe retest five um, on on EDNT, but uh, you know whereas MOSY. Um, not too convinced here uh, on MOSY, so I'd wait for you know at three fifty to really firm up and confirm uh, before getting involved with it. Uh, yeah, I was going to make a video on it, but I can talk a little bit about it. Um, talk about scaling into trades like Works and SONN and you know, when to exit, um, still exiting early. Yeah, really, you know, it, it really all comes back down to, you know, like I said, you know, you know, your risk reward, you know, looking for those three R's, looking for those four R's and, you know, maybe, you know, seeing which plays have big squeeze potential. I, I, I really underestimated Works I, and I shouldn't have. I knew... You know, I knew that, you know, a lot of shorts were thinking the news was BS, it was fake. Um, you know, I know the bars were cheap on it, on on works. And, you know, I should have known a little bit better that I was going to squeeze a little bit higher. You know, I was just, uh, just a little early on it. But, yeah, I could, you know, kind of go over it a little bit and, you know, kind of where to scale. So, I mean, there's really like three ways. I mean, you could, you know, really look to do it, you know, uh, you know, one would be just, you know, getting into the flush. It's always, you know, always, it's always risky, right? Always a little bit risky. You got to know that the odds are going to be down a little bit, but works out. You catch a massive R, catch a massive R on it because you're adding into a winner. Your average is lower. Um, and you can really capture some massive, uh, you know, R's on it, you know, if, if you do it properly. Right. But, you know, so like I said, first, we would really be into a flush, you know, I would say, you know, around, you know, a, uh, you know, a lower line. I wouldn't say not always the backside line. Sometimes it may be though. Sometimes it may be the backside line. Um, and I did have a backside line. I had a backside line five. So, um, if you really like the setup, you're confident. You know, the volume's there. 
uh, you may like the catalyst, whatever it may be, whatever your criteria is, um, has a better high chance of has a better chance of squeezing or fading. So, uh, you know, know your criteria. You know, you like to look for in a trade. So, I like to look for float rotation. I like to look for high baseline volume. You know, I like to look for, you know, stock with a catalyst. You know, SSR, high IO. So all those things kind of factor in. Um, you know, so I have my checklist. I have my criteria. What I like to look for, and ones that really nail. You know, a lot of uh, you know key points on your criteria on your setup. Um, those are some setups that you may want to look to more possibly scale in early because you know that the chances of it going is higher. And if you scale in and you know, and you start to add into that winner, capture a massive trade on your hands. So uh, you know, those are setups you want to look to scale. Uh, ones that you know really meet a lot of checkpoints on the criteria, even if it's a little lower. Um, you know, still not a you know a bad idea to look to you know scale in and scaling doesn't mean full size, right? It means you know dabbling, maybe twenty five percent, then you know get in you know fifty percent, seventy five percent, then you know look to get you know maybe full size. So you want to uh, look to scale in and you know bulks, maybe it could be you know two to three to four, up to you guys. I mean, I mean it's it's totally up to you guys um, on how do you how many times you want to scale in and how many how much shares. Um, well, yeah, so, you know, it works, uh, you know, this could have been your first scaling area you know, around your backside line five. That's, you know, uh, a lower, lower risk trade because it's backside, you know, it's still momentum is the downside. But I mean, that could be, you know, your first kind of scaling if it meets a lot of criteria. So first one is that lower line. Second type of scaling would be, you know, a higher low. And I'm, I'm talking about the long side, <laughs> you know, um, it'd be different on the short side. So. First one would be, you know, flush out into, you know, your lines. Second would be a higher low. And then third would be that confirmation that, you know, it's holding. And then, you know, the fourth type would be, you know, after it's squeezed and it's washing out to your lines. That's be that, that's being, you know, really aggressive. You think it's going to go a lot higher. Um, so that's how, you know, you would scale on this type of trade. Um, I, I think there's like three or four, you know, type, uh, you know, ads there. And you know, I always say, you know, when you're when you're adding, make sure that's another, make sure that's an area where you take another trade. So don't just add because you're up. Add at areas where um, you would get in another time, right? So that's that's you know uh, how I recommend to you know scale. So you know that first trade on a flush out, that's a trade right there. Second trade on a higher low, I think that could be a trade right there. Um, you know, third trade on a uh, confirmation. That's another trade right there, and then into a washout long as it's holding a fourth trade right there. So those are you know four areas where you want to scale. If you want to get really aggressive, I mean, it's up to you guys. I mean, you know, if it's breaking out over eight, you want to get in and add some more, and then you know, sell sell you know into you know another parabolic. I mean, there's so many ways to do it, but you know, that's that's how I like to do it. And I kind of explained a lot of some of the, I, I kind of explained a good portion of the video right there. So, um, that is what it is. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So I'm not going to answer any more risk management questions. I don't want to ruin that video too. <laughs> no, but there will be some more points I'll put into the video. But those are some those are some good points that you know I wanted to throw out there on scaling, and a lot and it goes hand in hand, you know, scaling and risk management. So it's you know both videos when I do them, you know, they'll be a little bit of both into it. Thanks, AJ. Appreciate it. Um, let's see, Sterling, you got a question too. Uh, I got a question. BMRA just came out with some news, uh, COVID-19 emergency news. It popped, dropped. You think the news is getting old now? Hence the drop back down. As usually, this would rip up. I know we have some uh, overhead resistance. Yeah, uh, I think you kind of touched up on it uh, a little bit there, Sterling. You know, probably a little bit of a combination of both. It's also a weird time to throw out a PR, to be honest. Um, you know, what, what time did this come out? Yeah, like 1030. It's kind of an odd time for a PR. You know, we usually don't see that. It's very rarely 
that we see a 1030 PR and that play has followed through, to be honest. So that's another reason. And yeah, like you just said, I mean, we have some overhead. We had some, you know, some big volume days. And you know, we did 33 million. Then we did, uh, you know, 20 million that follow up day. So we have some bag holders, weird time for PR. And, and it could be, you know, as you just said, you know, you're starting to get a little old. Maybe, you know, we're only going to see some of these micro floats really run off the coronavirus news or, you know, maybe, you know, we're going to start seeing, it, it could be anything, right? We can, you can speculate a lot of things on, uh, on why it didn't run, but those are some of the main things, um, why I didn't think it could run. THMO testing view up. Thank you. Uh, still, I don't know if traders are going to be scared. You know, I don't know if they're going to be scared when the, the next PR comes out for COVID nineteen news. I mean. You know, if big money's on it, big money's on it, and 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 they're gonna uh, they're gonna push it as long as you know there's you know traders willing to you know jump in there and there's liquidity going around on it. Um, and shorts are you know looking to short it back down. I mean, there'll be action on it. There'll be action. There'll be range on it. I think it's going to be more so sterling, uh, you know, how, how are we going to be going forward into the open, right? I mean, we just saw, you know, four, five, six plays t t today. And I know it's one day, you know, we could be overreacting, you know. We'll see how tomorrow looks. We'll see how Monday looks. It's a small sample size to really uh, get ahead of ourselves just yet. But um, I'm curious to see how these gappers look tomorrow into the open because we saw a straight sell fest on almost every single name. And we know we're in that chase market. You know, I think a lot of it's they're getting long crowded. I even think some, you know, shorts are now flipping biases going long on it. So um, when everyone's on one side, usually the opposite happens. So uh, let's just keep paying attention and, you know, study, you know, study these gappers going forward. Yeah, that too. Yeah, great point there. You know, I, I touched up on that earlier. Split attention, right? Where we have just a crowd on a lot of names that really kind of hurts um, some of the follow through. Just a lot of traders on THMO, a lot of traders on EDNT, a lot of traders here, a lot of traders there. Just too many names at once, and you know that 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 usually doesn't that usually doesn't bowl well. All right, guys. Um. 11.15, I went through my trades. Uh, I, 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 we took some notes, went over some good points, filled you guys a little bit in on, you know, the scaling video. So I'll give it, you know, five, maybe 10 minutes if you guys have any more questions. And I'll look to wrap up this weekly trader review. Um, so far, it's kind of turning into my, my trade review, which wasn't the intention, but I know some of you guys are... Uh, just kind of listening, or maybe you're new. Okay, yeah, Sterling, I saw it. I, I saw it. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll, I'll DM you, but uh, I don't think I, you know, I don't know if I can, uh, but I'll, I'll message you. I'm going to work around it. We'll figure out a way, but I could definitely get it to you, though. Um, somehow. Bob, are you listening? Cool. Nice. Yeah. I know you guys are probably just a little shy. Maybe you don't want to go over your trades or you don't have anything to ask. It's cool. Nothing wrong with just listening and learning. 
But eventually, I do want to see some of you guys, you know, step up, ask some questions, even if it's not me, right? You know, we have some great traders in Discord. You know, we have, you know, come to life trading pennies. You know, Sterling Trader. We have so many great traders in there in Discord. You know, you could ask someone else if you guys don't want to ask me. You know, Poseidon too. I know I'm not the best fundamental trader. Poseidon's really good with the fundamentals. Um, I'm sure he could help some of you guys out. He wouldn't mind, you know, filling you guys in on some of the filings. AJ, I uh, don't think you saw my comment, but I traded PSTI yesterday. It's like holding trend. Yeah. Yeah, PSTI. I think we, uh, I think I wrote about that yesterday that um, we're kind of flipping biases on it on um, PSTI. Oh, I should have wrote it out for this morning too. Yeah. Um, once that, once that play, you know, held trend yesterday and it closed strong, um, the short thesis was no longer there, right? No longer there. This thing should have died yesterday. And once it, you know, started, you know, grinding and holding above VWAP, um, shorts were in a bind, you know, people who were swinging this uh, are now stuck. Even yesterday, you're seeing these dips hold, these dips hold, these dips hold, holding above VWAP, closing strong again. So every day it's closing strong. Once again, you know, flushing out, flushing out of the open, putting in these snapback candles and uh, coming right up. So, yeah, nice trade there, uh, AJ. Yeah, this is a good setup. Um, if you guys go watch the uh, the video in the video library on multi-day longs, um, this is a multi-day long setup on PSTI. Just because it's up, you know, from four hours to ten dollars doesn't mean it's a short, right? Still holding trend. Um, it's uh, you know still you know grinding above VWAP, closing strong. So are still stuck, and it was easy to borrow too, which is even uh, which is even better for that multi-day long. Awesome, you learned the setup for my video. Great, yeah, awesome. Yeah, just following the trend, you know, trends holding, trends confirming. Why fight the trend, right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I know. Poseidon said he's going to, you know, get us that filings out, though. I'm not sure uh, what happened with that. I know he was, you know, coronavirus kind of hit and. I don't want to bother him, but yeah, if, if you know Sterling, if you if you get through to him, let me know what he says. All right, let's see. Um, Bulldog Trader, what, what do you recommend for someone new with a small account? Should I focus on one setup? I find myself uh, trying everything. Um, yeah, you know, it's uh, – you know, it, it kind of goes back to, you know, your personality and, you know, what suits you best. Um, everyone's different. We all have different personalities. Um, so you have to find, you know, what suits you best, whether that be scalping, uh, whether that be, you know, just buying the flushes with a good risk reward, uh, looking for reclaims on the wash trap and squeeze patterns, um, looking for early bird longs. I mean, we, 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 uh, that's what I try to do. I know I throw a lot at you guys, but I really try to gear towards everyone. Uh, maybe I'll do a video on scalping once cause that's something I didn't do yet. But, uh, you know, what I try to do best is, you know, give you guys pretty much every sort of kind of setup. Uh, that I think's a valid setup in the small cap market, and it's up to, it's it's really for you guys to you know kind of pick and choose you know what what suits you best. So, um, what I recommend you know bulldog trader is uh you know start off maybe one or two max, um you know start tracking that over and over again, back testing it. Uh, I know we have some you know you know a lot of good traders um here who have tracked you know, a lot of these setups, you know, I have, and, you know, they found a lot of success doing them like the early bird long, the wash trap and squeeze pattern. So, um, you know, that proven the work, you know, I've, you know, traded these setups hundreds and hundreds of times and, uh, you know, they worked and, uh, 
you know, it's just a matter of uh, what suits you best and, uh, you know, what setup you, you want to go for. But don't overwhelm yourself. You know, you said you're trying everything. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, you know, just focus on two, maybe the early bird long or the wash up and squeeze, or, um, mm -hmm. you just want to look to, you know, play flushes and, or you want to look to scalp, whatever it may be, but just focus on one or two. Don't overwhelm yourself. Um, and then go from there. When I first started, I, I, I was kind of like that. I was trying everything and, you know, then I kind of, you know, saw, you know, a couple setups that, you know, I liked and that were, you know, that were successful. And you know, kind of molded them into my own, and kind of tweaked a few things and made it my own. So that's that's how I uh, kind of how I started, and and went from there. And the big thing too is going to be back testing. At back testing, that, that's going to build confidence. Back testing is going to build that that statistical edge for you. It's going to help you know build your confidence and uh, you know give you that that uh, that edge to you know really pull the trigger and get in. So I hope that helps. Yeah, well, Mondo, I'll, I'll do that. I'll, I'll do a video on scalping. Um, I'm not the biggest scalper, but I'm gonna—I'll do one anyway because I—I I really, I really do want to have a diverse video library where it kind of caters to every type of trader. Because I know there's some scalp traders in here, and I know, uh, I know a lot of scalp traders, and, and and scalping could be you know a good you know a good strategy for me. It's just you know just not my personality. I I don't I don't like trading you know, 10, 15, 20 times a day. But hey, it may be you. Maybe you like you know. You know, getting in on a pullback on EDNT, buying a three dollar bounce, uh, risking you know five cents, and then selling at three ten, three fifteen for you know a two three R. Um, there's a ton of successful scalp traders out there, so yeah, I'll definitely look to do a video on scalping um, at some point. THMO, yeah, THMO testing again here. Um, keeping an eye on it. 750 is going to be our key level. I watched your video for the fifth time. Wow, it's starting to sink in. Awesome, Bob. Yeah, long in the first uh yeah, long in the day ones are uh I think it's always the best. Um you know, every time I get in the day two long, I know it's not an A plus setup. Always. If for me at least, you know, if it's a day two and I'm long in it, I know it's not an A plus setup. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with long in, you know, day twos or day threes, like PSDI, multi day long. There's nothing wrong with multi day longs at all. Nothing wrong with it. Um, but for me, it's not an eight plus setup. It can still be a good setup, like PSTI. Um, I know we had, you know, WRTH. I had a massive trade on that one on a multi day long. Um, I forgot the other one. Like, what was that blue apron stock? That one had a really good multi day long setup. So you'll get that really good multi day long setup. But for me, it's never really an eight plus day ones or eight plus for me. But nothing wrong with it, though, at all. Yeah, it is a lot to know. That's why I try not to overwhelm you. A lot of you guys asked for me about stuff on the tape, and I don't know. I, I try not to confuse you guys too much. There's some things I, you know, I could say, but I don't want you to confuse you guys. I try to teach you guys the just the most important things about tape reading and just you know all the stuff in general. I don't want to get you know too too in depth where you guys are like, whoa, Nick, what are you saying? And then you start to overthink, and then you know now you're trading differently. So always best to keep it simple. You know, when you're trading, you don't want to overcomplicate uh, your trading at all. Yes, yeah, so that's another great idea. Um, drawing out some lines for people for the backside. Yeah, I can start doing that a little more. Uh, sometimes, sometimes I forget to draw it out in the trade ideas, but I could definitely look to. Uh, you look to draw some more lines out for you guys.
All right. So we got a couple more questions here. And we got some time. I'm not doing anything else. Um, another another coffee trading pennies. What's that? How many coffees do you want trading pennies? <laughs> um, yeah, well, Mondo, you like scalping like that? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I like seeing it. I like I like seeing you guys, you know, diverse and uh, I like seeing different types of traders. Um because we're all different. We're all different. You know, buying the reclaims may not be your thing, but maybe, you know, playing the washout may be your thing. Or even, you know, waiting for a stock to squeeze out first and then getting in on a pullback. You know, the washout long that we the washout long video. Um, so it's nice. It's cool. I find that second day longs take first profit. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Can't get greedy on the day two longs for sure. I, I would definitely agree with that. Chill out. I haven't tracked it, but I, I, I do from experience see that selling on the day twos at first targets are uh, a good idea. Where do you get the 750 line on THMO? Oh, just looking left, right? Looking left. We always talk about looking left. Just look left, right? Um, let me get a little bit of a better time frame. I mean, so you get to see, right, you know, the 750 region, right, just trouble, 750, 750 trouble, right? It's just a common consensus, right? Um, just seeing that 750 is a, it's a key level, just a lot of volume trade here. We have a lot of uh, big exchanges around 750. I think this could be, you know, a, a good area where maybe some shorts have started to, you know, maybe average in. Maybe they got in, you know, eight bucks. They added into the flushes. They have around maybe a 750 average, so we could see some volume step in here, some covers come in um, around 750. So that's kind of where you know I get that 750 area from. Yeah, you know, me too, Sterling. I'm around like a 71, 72, but I think it's going to come down a little bit. If I'm going to start to scale and really try to capture some big R's, um, may come down a little bit, but I'm fine with that. But yeah, definitely, you know, under 10 million to float, float rotation, hot sector, good news. Um, that's the long criteria you want to be looking for, right? So many faders today reminds you of pre-corona plays, yeah. I mean, that's how it is, you know. Uh, a normal market, we're going to have a good mixture. We're going to have a good mixture. We're probably going to actually have more faders than squeezers in a normal market. Just how it is. These penny stocks, they're all, not all of them, but most most, most of these companies are, you know, not good companies and just, uh, you know, most of them are going to come right back down. So just in general, we usually do see in small caps more faders than squeezers. Um, but right now it's been the opposite. We've been getting a lot more squeezers ever since the coronavirus. We've been seeing a lot more squeezes. Um, but today it was the first really noticeable day that we saw a lot of faders. I would agree with you there. All right, guys, I'll probably give it a few more minutes here. Any last questions? And I'll look to wrap up this, uh, this weekly trader review. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something. Where does the sky begin <laughs> in China? <laughs> oh, man. That's great. Uh, my favorite short setup. That's a good question. Hey, guys, I apologize. The exhaustion, the, the, the recent short video I made, uh, I need to remake that. I was really... <laughs> 
I just was not focused on that video because that was the day when uh, AKR was about to squeeze. And I was like watching it the whole time while I was making the video. So I got to make a new video. But anyways, back to that. Uh, my favorite short setup, uh, probably the, huh. I'd probably see the gap and crap setup. I, I like the gap and crap setup. Um, that's probably my favorite short setup. I would say, you know, the exhaustion short probably, you know, yields like the best return, make the most money on that type of setup. Because let's be honest, guys, you know, if you're shorting below VWAP, there's only so much, you know, you know, you can really capture, mm -hmm. right? You know, I know it's always scary to short about view up, but if you know if you really want to get those you know massive risk rewards, um, you're gonna have to dabble a little bit. Doesn't mean going full size above view up, but you're gonna have to dabble a little bit above view up. Um, some of you may disagree, but you know I, I've just seen it that you know that that just yields the best you know risk reward. Um, just dabbling in above view up and then adding. I'm not saying go full size. I'm saying maybe look to dabble a little bit into you know, uh, you know stuff. Or just a you know a fail follow through attempt, um, something like this. You know where we got a fail follow through attempt, a retest, a rejection, to dabble in, look to add, look to cover. But I see those those setups uh, um, have the best risk reward. But yeah, the gap and crap is definitely my favorite. SNGX was a a beauty. Beauty. Look at that, one fifties, man. That's a that's a sick fade, and it's not, it's a low stress. That's why I like it. It's a low stress short. Like, you know, you know your risk. You know, you just you're being there with them, right? You know, we talk about it. You know, knowing when they're buying versus when they're selling, right? So I want to be with them when they're selling. I want to be with them when they're buying. And S and GX, they were there early selling this. Um, I don't know pre market. I, I gotta be a little bit. I gotta be. I gotta be a little bit more active in uh, some of the pre market plays. Um, there's been so much that opened that I've been kind of avoiding pre market a little bit uh, for whatever reason. But yeah, SNGX was a beauty. I mean, I saw them. You know, just keep refreshing, refreshing, refreshing on the ask, and just a slow fade back down. All right. Um, I'll take a couple more here. Yeah, well, mine definitely the back holder short setup. Yeah, I used to call it a day two, but you know, sometimes we'll see it on a day three or four. That's why I don't call it the day two setup anymore. I just call it the bag holder short. It's just when every long, not every long, but a good amount of longs are underwater. Um, that's why I call it the bag holder short. But yeah, that setup has been really good. After a big day one, that day two comes, the bids are gone, volumes, you know, not there. Uh, look to shorten to the pops into prior day resistance. That's that's been uh, a good setup. The only problem I have about that setup is it, it's just the liquidity, man. That's the only problem with that setup. It, it's really good for small accounts, but when you start to get a bigger account, um, that setup just uh, it's it's a little it's a little tougher, like. Like CHCI, I pr maybe two years ago I would have taken that, but just the liquidity is it's just it's just not there sometimes on those setups, which makes it a little bit tougher to uh, to trade those for a bigger account. Okay, guys, probably another minute or two. Last questions or last question or two, and I'm going to end it. Hope you guys enjoyed. I appreciate you guys too for all the for all the questions. It's nice to have you know some questions come in um, on these Q and A's. All right, I think that's it. I'm not seeing any more questions. Um, I ended here. Once again, I hope everyone enjoyed here. Be doing these weekly. 
on Thursdays, going over my trades, your guys' trades, and answering questions. I've been enjoying it. Um, hopefully, it's been helpful for you guys. I think it's helping me too. You know, I like doing this, you know, weekly trader review, just going over everything um, from the week. So, with that being said, I'm going to end it here. Everyone have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you guys over in Discord. I'm out. Peace.